name is Dwee and today I'll be talking about video games and violence. Now, whenever we see the news talking about video games these days, it seems like it is always the same thing. Usually something that along the line of video games are making children more aggressive and violent. Now to be fair, our counter arguments have also stayed pretty much the same, which is something like, it's not our fault, it's just a game. That's the thing with this debate. There are two sides that are so certain about their respective answer that no one is even bothering to stop and do the research. On one side, you have people who are so convinced that it must be the media we're consuming that they're eager to point the blame there because they are biased against video games. They don't understand it. But on the other side, there are people like me. People who grew up playing video games where our knee-jerk reaction is like, no, I play video games. I know a lot of people who play video games and they're not violent. The problem with that though is that it is not real proof. It's just a bunch of anecdotal evidence. Even I'm biased too in this debate because I'm eager to defend this thing that I love. It's 2021 and I think it's time to change the conversation to move beyond the he says, she says style of arguments that this topic has married in for decades. We need to get down to a real story scientific fact. Do video games actually make people more violent? First, let's talk about mass shootings. Many people think that violent video games plays a huge role in encouraging children to participate in or commit mass shootings. An article written by Colin Campbell, which analyzes some of the US's deadliest school shootings states, in the immediate aftermath of the Virginia Tech shootings in 2007, it was reported that Swain Hu Cho, the perpetrator who killed 32 people, was an avid fan of a multiplayer shooter game called Counter Strike. This would have clearly showed that the video game could have encouraged him to do so, only if his roommate did not prove this wrong by stating that he'd never seen Cho play any video games. As you can see, the news media falsely, falsely reported about Cho being a fan of Counter Strike which was absolutely not true at all. Secondly, lots of people like to point out that certain studies prove that there's a negative connection between violent video games and aggressive behavior. And video games plays a huge role in, in causing aggressive behavior and crimes such as mass shootings. But they have failed to support this statement because violent video games were hardly the main reason of those negative outcomes and most of the studies were not conducted correctly or efficiently. Yes, violent video games may seem horrible to be played by children, but it sure doesn't encourage them to participate in, participate in mass shootings. A report made by the United States Secret Service and the United States Department states, out of the 41 attackers, 27% had exhibited an interest in violent movies. 24% in violent books, and 37% in their own writings, such as poems and journal entries, while 12% showed interest in violent video games. An analysis by Colin Campbell states, on December 1st, 1997, 14-year-old Michael Carnell shot to death three students. He had been a target of bullies and suffered from a variety of diagnosed mental illness. This means that in almost all of the cases which a child is a perpetrator, video games rarely the, is rarely the main cause. Now to sum things up, video games are not to blame for aggressive behavior and juvenile crimes. Although the media states that video games have negative effects on children, most of the studies were conducted incorrectly or efficiently. Stop blaming video games for bad parenting and such a failure of what you call an education system. Thanks for listening.